number four. I always buy Chanel, Hermes, or Louis Vuitton, so I'm always buying an investment. Wrong. from timpanese.com and welcome along to this week's video blog. For those of you who already subscribed to my channel, a really warm welcome back. And for those of you who don't, just a warm welcome. This week, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about worst investment handbags. Now, as most of you know, I do resell luxury designer bags for a living. So I've more than once been in the really awkward situation where someone brings to me a really, really expensive handbag, which they may have for a year ago, a couple of years ago, maybe even less time than that, and they want a really considerable price back for that bag, and I'm the one that has to break the news to them that unfortunately we're just not going to be able to command that on the second-hand market. And so what I thought I might do for you today is actually just give you my nine rules that I have when buying an expensive handbag. I'd also really like to know your worst investment piece that you've ever bought. Well, nosy, you all know that. Comment below and let me know. So rule number one for me when trying to buy an investment bag is buy a classic. Uh, I, as much as anyone, follow all these wonderful Instagram feeds and blogs of beautiful trend-led handbags. I fall in love with them. I, I desperately want that and I covet it and I really want it, but then my brain takes over. I have a limited budget. Do I really want to spend a lot of money on something that in a year's time I'm probably going to fall out of love with? And the answer is no. I actually would prefer to put my money Money into something I really like and I'm going to get use out of but that when I come to sell it it's still going to be desired and wanted and you can still command a reasonable amount on the second-hand market so for example what would a classic be well it very much depends on your budget you've obviously got the Hermes Kelly I mean this is a timeless classic that no matter when you buy it it's a wonderful investment piece but it's not going to suit the budgets of everybody. So something else you could also consider would be something by LV. Now these bags, again, they're produced year after year. They continuously put their prices up. And do you know what? They're just timeless, great pieces that you will get a lot of wear out of, but the demand won't fall. So if you do grow tired of it, you can sell it. Now, what would be the example of a trend-led piece? For me, this little beauty, and do you know what? I love it, and that's why pre-owned's amazing, because actually you can buy trend pieces for a fraction of the price. But if you were to buy something like this new, the chance of you getting your money back on that piece when you do come to sell it is a lot lower than if you buy a classic. Rule number two is don't buy limited editions. Limited editions are an incredibly clever way for brands to put Put a premium on some of their classic products. I do think some of them are really, really beautiful, but if I was looking to buy for investment, then I wouldn't choose to buy them to edition, simply because although they might command a really high price on the first-hand market, on the second-hand market, it can be hard to realize the sort of same uplift in price. Another very clever thing that brands charge extra for, which actually does devalue the piece, is personalization. So if I am looking to buy something for investment, I will not get it personalized. In fact, my husband really recently bought a beautiful Burberry trench and he really wanted to have his initials put on. And I just said to him, why, why would you ever do that? It completely devalues the product you have just bought because you will not be able to resell that for anywhere near the amount that you could do. Not that you're thinking that you want to, but it's really nice to have that option. One day you may fall out of love with this piece you so love at the moment. Rule number four. I always buy Chanel, Hermes, or Louis Vuitton, so I'm always buying an investment. Wrong. Although something like this by Chanel would be considered an investment piece, I can tell you now that they definitely produce items that are not. And although you might buy a seasonal piece by any of those three amazing fashion houses, they're not all gonna be considered investment pieces. So if you are looking to buy for investment, 
do opt for the classic styles, not necessarily the seasonal ones that you might spend a lot of money for first hand, but actually they're not going to be so popular when you do come to try and sell them. Rule number five, if I am looking to spend a lot of money on something, I will research the brand that I'm, I want to make sure that they have longevity. Sometimes it is nicer to buy something a little more quirky. However, it is really important to actually look at what they're reselling for on the secondhand market and that's not just looking at the prices that people are asking it's looking at the prices that are actually realized designers do come and go for example Luella Bartley she was really big and really quite hyped up in the UK for quite a while and unfortunately now she does no longer trade and that really can have an impact on the price that you achieve in the second hand market. My sixth rule for buying for investment is to know yourself. Know, <laughs> that sounds like really gangster doesn't it? Know yourself. If you're the sort of person that is really ruthless and you can buy something, enjoy it for six months and sell it, you're going to do really well buying and selling handbags because when you come to sell them, there's still going to be quite a high demand. The pieces might even still be in the store when you come to sell them which means that you're going to have absolutely no trouble selling these things on however if you're the sort of person like me that if I spend a lot of money I do actually want to keep something for quite a long time then I'm the sort of person that needs to buy a more classic piece something that is not going to date or go out of fashion so that's why I do tend to buy to buy classics so really it does depend on the sort of person and the sort of shopper that you are and if you can be ruthless and just get rid of stuff, then actually I do think you are less at risk from buying trend-led pieces. Rule number seven for me when thinking about buying for investment is, is if you know me, you know that I'm completely accident prone. So I will choose darker colors. I'll choose more hard wearing leathers and materials. And um, so I'd be more likely to put my money in a bag like this than a bag like this just simply because I know myself I know that I do like to use my things and the chances are that something like this is going to look better after some time of use than something like this I also tend to put in bag inners to protect the linings because most of the really beautiful bags do have really delicate suede linings I don't know why they do that I think it's to punish people like me so I will put in my bag inners just to protect them and really preserve as much value in them as possible. I also make sure that I keep all boxes, receipts and cards, again, just because it does make it that much easier to resell. Rule number eight, and this is kind of where, where my economics is gonna come in. I tend to avoid buying designer bags at outlet or from designers that are often seen regularly at outlet and their outlet style designs. As much as I, I wouldn't actually not buy something at outlet, but if I'm specifically buying for investment, I do actually sometimes think it is a false economy. I think a lot of these bags are produced specifically for outlet and you're not actually getting the bargain that you think you are. So I would tend to buy from designers that haven't flooded the market with their product because actually that really does keep their prices high. And my final rule when thinking about buying for investment is shop pre-owned. That's simply because you can often find currencies and pieces at a really good discount, maybe 30% off what they're actually currently retailing for in store. So if you are actually trying to be economical with your buying habits, there's no shame in buying pre-owned because actually you, you're gonna lose so much less on that product when you come to sell it at the end. So that is my final rule. And you know what, I'm gonna caveat everything I've said by saying buy what you love. Nothing beats having something you've coveted on your arm and walking that slight bit taller. So really do just buy what you love and you know what, if it's a wise investment, then that is really nice byproduct. But I've just given you nine simple rules that I use if I am actually thinking of making an investment purchase. As I say, let me know your thoughts. I wanna know your best and worst investment buys down below. Subscribe, like, I'll be back here same Wish time I'm next week. And Thanks guys. Every moment. It was reckless and we owned it, yeah, yeah. We were high and we were sober.